Good afternoon, Lace Jump, and I've joined this as many a true and welcome to Democracy 4, a great big political simulation thingy, and that means it's time. Today, I'm going to fix the United States of America. Okay, so this here is America, but represented in blob form. Don't worry if it looks a bit confusing, it's actually really easy to get your head around. So, the blue blobs are facts of life, things that are always going to exist in your country. So, for example, this one is productivity. So, you can't just, you know, flick a switch to make productivity go up and down. Instead, productivity is a function of a whole bunch of different things. So, some stuff is bad for productivity, some stuff is good for productivity, productivity has a positive effect on some things, and potentially a negative effect on others. So, if I want to change that, what I need to do is, yeah, figure out what are the things that are influencing it. So, those blobs that are not coloured blue, those actually are policies that I can change directly. So here we go, work safety laws. If I want to impact productivity, I might want to change that, but of course that's going to impact more than one thing, because everything is just a massive interactive net. You'll always change something you're not really expecting to, so... In the case of work safety laws, uh, yeah, if I were to whack them right up, for example, then that's actually going to be a little bit worse for productivity, because there's going to be a bit of red tape or whatever. If I whack those down, that's good for productivity, but some people are not going to be thrilled about that. The red blobs, meanwhile, are universal bads. I can't just flick a switch to turn them off, but you're pretty much always going to want these to be as low as possible. So say, for example... Uh, Respiratory disease, okay, this got a bit real a bit fast. Yeah, that's bad, obviously, and you can see there, there are a few things that cause that, and the particular reason it's so bad is there's no benefit to it. The higher it gets, the more parents dislike you, and the more productivity goes down. There is no benefit to high respiratory disease. You've just got to get it down. And yeah, obviously, uh, these people over here, these are different cohorts of voters. Some of them, like, uh, based on the bars in the background, there might be loads of them. So there's loads of middle-income people. Whereas, say, the number of farmers is relatively small. So, uh, yeah, the colour bars also represent how likely they are to vote for you at the next election. So, uh, okay. We've got to fix America, we've also got to, you know, win another term so that, you know, I can finish the great work of fixing America. Because I suspect it's going to take more than four years to do. And the green blobs, you might have guessed, are universal goods. So say, for example, we've got over here, yes, technological advantage. Because there is no downside to being one of the most technologically advanced countries in the world. It's just good for productivity, good for GDP. So you want that to be as high as possible because it's an unqualified good. Meanwhile, the flashing red blobs, yeah, they're the ones that really want some attention. So we've already seen respiratory disease, understandable under the circumstances. And uh, obesity. There is a massive obesity crisis. So... Uh, we need to do something about that too. So, uh, what's affecting that? Car usage uh, is affecting that. GDP is affecting that too. Meanwhile, state health service and... Oh dear, the state health service is... That's very small. We might need to do something about that. Because that's making a lot of people happy. But okay, one thing I can't help but notice there is... Uh, yeah, the obesity crisis is partly being driven by uh, car usage. People are driving places. Uh, they probably ought to be like, you know, walking or cycling to. But at the same time... Uh, Look what we've got over here. Commuters. There's a lot of them, but they're very, very unhappy. Motorists. There's loads of them. Very unhappy indeed. So, okay. There might be an opportunity here. So the biggest driver we've got here is gridlock. Gridlock causes all sorts of problems. It's hurting the economy. It's hurting commuters. It's hurting motorists. It's entirely a function of traffic congestion. Traffic congestion is primarily a focus of car usage, but environmental protests also feeds into that really, really small amount. Don't even worry about that. And uh, yeah, that impacts CO2 emissions uh, and passes on to gridlock. Population's also feeding into that. So uh, as population rises, uh, congestion's gonna get worse. We've also got road building over here. So yeah, right now road building is having a negative effect on car usage, presumably because... Uh, yeah, we're not actually building enough roads. Potentially, then again, actually, if we were to... No, we're building too many roads. Got it. Okay, so they hate gridlock, but they also hate things that might, you know, reduce the number of cars on the road. So I can't just put up taxes on cars or petrol because that's just going to make them even more furious. So basically, all the motorists think they should be allowed on the road 
but nobody else should. So okay, this is this is going to be a tough group to keep happy. Well, okay, we don't actually have to, you know, pull the levers that already exist. We could just come up with exciting new sexy policies. Here we go, policy ideas. Rather than changing what we've got, we could add new stuff in. And in particular, yeah, can't help but notice, ideally, we might want to do something with... Yeah, here we flipping go, carpooling campaign. Okay, there's a bunch of stuff we could do here, like, ooh, telecommuting. Okay, so uh, that would mean... Less people had to use their cars, they'd simply be slightly less motorists. And if they're slightly less motorists, the existing motorists are happier because there's less on the road. Or bicycle subsidies. That is uh, okay, cheap. Nobody really cares about bicycle subsidies. Uh, that causes, oh, that makes health go up too. And obesity go down. And uh, it's pretty cheap, all things considered. So. Uh, Okay, that's gotta be a yes right there. Though, hang on, there's, oh, there's so many things we could do. There's a lot we could do. Including congestion charging. So, uh, the motorists wouldn't like it, but as congestion goes down and car usage goes down, they might get happier regardless. So, they don't like the policy, but they like the result. So, yeah, this is where this game starts getting really complicated. Because, yeah, there's such a complex net of interactions uh, that sometimes it's hard to figure out, you know, what's going to happen long term. Now, a halfway house could be the cycling campaign. So, uh, $750 million. It is going to have a positive effect on health. It is going to get car usage down. But, bus usage also down. And obesity down. So, uh, yeah, that'd be way more expensive. But it would also boost the income of the environmentalist faction. Got it. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Both of these are really cheap and easy to implement. Or electric cars. But that would just lead to... Uh, well, motorists would like it, but there's still as many cars. It doesn't solve the gridlock problem. Then, what we could do is, uh, yeah, free bus passes. But that doesn't seem to reduce car usage because uh, I'm guessing, ah, of retirement age. So maybe the assumption is they're not really driving that much anyway, the drivers of the commuters. Now, high-speed rail subsidies are expensive, but people would love them. You know what? This is cheap. We're going to make this happen. So, okay, bicycle subsidies, uh, they're being implemented, but I get to choose to what extent they're going to be implemented. So we could go all in and pay, you know, extra to make this a little bit more expensive to implement, but make the, you know, impact a bit stronger too. So at that point, we're basically giving away free bicycles. But it's not just the cost in dollars, it's the cost in political influence. So uh, I've only got a certain amount of capital I can spend uh, per session, though I can carry it over from turn to turn, representing three months each if I want to save up for something big and complex. So uh, yeah, if I nudge it over too high, that's going to cost me two political capital rather than one. So, I mean, this seems like a good thing to me. Like, you know, let's give away some good cheap bikes. It's going to have a good effect on obesity. Bus usage is going to go down weirdly. But, like, more importantly, car usage is going to go down significantly. That's the big thing. And it's good for health, damn it. So, uh, that there, we are going to spend right now. So, we're spending a billion dollars on bikes. Love it. And we're not done yet. No, 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 no. Now we're giving away the bikes. We're going to start a campaign to tell people to get on those bikes and cycle places. And uh, this one is, ooh. I mean, honestly, we can get car usage. Yeah, get car usage way down. Okay. Once everybody's on a bike, the people who are still in cars are going to be so happy about what we're doing because we are going to get rid of gridlock. And then we're going to implement carpooling, all right? The beginning of my campaign to fix America is uh, we're going to sort out gridlock and that's going to have a bit of a positive impact on health, which is a big priority. But, you know, it's easier to swallow, hey, maybe bicycles are cool, here's a free bicycle, than, hey, we need to actually, you know, completely reform the health service. So this one's an easier way to just sneak that in under the radar, damn it. So once again, that's... Oh, that barely costs any more, and we can get car usage way down. Yes, everybody into one car, please. And everyone who can work from home, start working from home if you can. Parents are going to love it. Telecoms is going to love it. We've got commuters on side. The number of commuters is going to go down, and that's going to be... Oh, this is all good news. This is... Oh, that's a bit expensive. I'm going to be honest, that's... Okay, maybe we do this on, like... The low side, then again, implementing it. 
Okay, weirdly implementing it lower than the default is actually more expensive capital-wise, which is interesting. Yeah, we'll take it just to here. We'll spend $2 billion investing in the infrastructure to ensure telecommunication, which is going to be really good for one of our industries. Parents are going to love it. Commuters are going to love it. It's going to be brilliant. And car usage over the next four turns, representing a year, will start going down. Okay, this has all been marvellous. Now, admittedly, I've just spent a fair few billion dollars, and we were already in a lot of debt. Like loads of debt and also the deficit is okay so um maybe we should also like make some money somewhere i mean just boosting gdp so the size of the economy is bigger would be lovely but as it turns out this is all um it's a bit on the complicated side right get down over here to tax and let's actually just uh reset this here set it by finance there we go so now now I can see how important things are financially. I've rearranged the bubbles, so the biggest, most expensive stuff, whether that's in terms of cost or income generation, those bubbles are bigger. Whereas, yeah, the small bubbles are less expensive just in pure financial terms. So as a result of that, I now know the biggest driver of income is income tax, understandably. Then after that, you've got payroll taxes, and then after that, you go into, what are you, corporation tax? Yeah, corporation tax over there and then sales tax over there. Though I could just come over here to income and actually get myself, yes, a lovely pie chart and oh blimey. Okay, so a tiny rise in income tax could potentially cover a lot of stuff. Alternatively, oh yes, America and your ridiculous military. Though I'm guessing it's, um, it's gonna be a bit difficult to sort that out, right? Okay, we could lower it a bit, but yeah, that's what these colours represent. With the amount of political capital I've got right now, I could lower it as far as the green bar allows, no further. So, if I were to do that, I'd save... Uh, okay, I could save about, what is that, $15 billion immediately. Just by doing that. Now, the problem is, uh, yeah, there are downsides. Plenty of people who work in these jobs, they're going to become uh, unemployed. Meanwhile, yeah, technology is often developed in the military space before it moves consumer side. So uh, that's going to have a bit of a problem. Together with private space industry, there's going to be a knock-on effect there. Liberals are going to like it. Patriots are not. But it is $15 billion. So, okay, consider coming back to that. I'm guessing, yeah, tax rises are going to be like... Uh, unpopular, right? Oh yeah, hugely, hugely unpopular. Though I say unpopular, that's not really popularity, that's instead a function of, yeah, how difficult politically it is uh, to make it happen. Though, yeah, certain taxes are more or less popular with certain people, so if I were to raise that, it would impact the self-employed and the capitalist factions uh, more than anybody else. I'm guessing income tax, yeah, if you try and raise that, the middle earners, who are a lot of people, are really annoyed. So, you're annoying many, many folks. And yeah, there are some softer targets down here, like, say, alcohol tax, which wouldn't affect as many people, but... Yeah, that's not gonna generate much, even though it's a bit easier to raise. That could generate... I mean, probably enough to cover my ridiculous car policies, uh, and it would lower alcohol consumption, which is, uh, you know, good in terms of knock-on to health. So, uh, okay, then again, it would actually increase the level of poverty because some people are just going to keep buying booze anyway, and oh dear. Okay, and that's not even going to make that much money. We need to find a good tax, an excellent tax. Inheritance tax! That doesn't seem to be annoying uh, too many people. And right now it generates 4.47 billion, but that's because it's only at 5%. Okay, that's going to be expensive, like, really expensive to knock up, and, uh, yeah, the problem we've got there is that's a lot of political capital to only get hold of an extra $14 billion. Payroll taxes, meanwhile, that's, that's interesting. That's actually pretty cheap to put up. That's a lot of extra money right there, but it's going to have a depressing effect on uh, wages, obviously, because take-home pay is gonna go down. That's... Hmm. Gig economy goes up, more people start working for themselves, potentially a bit under the table. Self-employment, capitalist... Okay, hang on. 
Show me more about... No, no, don't, don't do that. Don't spend the money yet. I just want to learn about uh, wages. So wages being impacted by uh, GDP, immigration, labour laws, minimum wage, payroll taxes, uh, employment. But that's having a positive effect on uh, a whole bunch of stuff. Like, say, uh, productivity. Don't really want to hurt wages. Okay, we're going to... Oh, this is tricky. This is very tricky. Uh, sales taxes, uh, yeah, we just can't pull that up. People really hate that being up. In fact, they're weirdly happy about me taking money out of their payroll, but, like, not so much out of uh, sales. I guess it's a more visible tax. I'm not sure. So, uh, okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pay for my stupid carpooling policies uh, by, yes, lowering our armed forces from still overwhelming just to slightly less overwhelming. Okay, it's gonna be fine. So uh, apply that change. Some of that's gonna take a little bit of time to come through, but we're gonna save a whole bunch of money. So what we've now got is less tanks, more bicycles. It's gonna be great. And that should be pretty much all I can do this turn. Technically, there might be like one more thing I can do. Hang on, let's see if there's like any policy. No, there's no policies that cost only one anymore. I've already actually put those in because all of them were bicycle schemes. Right, put us back to weighted mode, so everything's a bit more uh, clear at this point, and uh, that should be everything we can do. So uh, now we move time forward and see what's about to happen, and uh, okay, health I swear just ticked up a tiny, tiny issue, though uh, okay, potentially bad situation, drug addiction if we don't act soon. So that's, that's a concern. Also, uh, public smoking ban. So... Uh, Okay, make people healthier, but potentially annoy them, or people can smoke wherever they want. Hmm, public smoking. Okay, I mean, I'm perfectly fine with the UK laws as they are in terms of, like, restaurants and pubs. I mean, sure, we do have a health crisis going on. We know that's a thing, so we're going to do some banning of public smoking, though... Yeah, that's going to get tobacco usage down significantly. Good. That's got to be for the long-term good. Now, that problem you were mentioning, drug addiction. Yeah, right now we don't have a crisis, but if we pass that red line, then we're going to have a crisis. Okay, so the source of that is, yeah, some difficult stuff like, say, poverty. That's not going to be easy to sort out, but state health service. If we could just boost that a bit, we might be able to nudge this down before it becomes a crisis. And oh my goodness, Gridlock is looking... Uh, oh, it's going in the right direction. Yes, very much so. Admittedly, we need to get it right down under here to actually solve that problem. But it's less bad than it used to be. And car usage is trending down in the right direction. This is... Uh, okay, this has all been very positive. And here we go. Commuters are starting to cheer up as well. This is... Okay. We're moving in the right direction. This is all very positive. We've still got a deficit, but it's not as bad as it was. Okay, that state health service that a lot of people seem to be, you know, enjoying. That could also, in theory, have, uh, yeah, a positive impact on the obesity crisis. Let's have a look, see what we can do here, and how much it's going to cost uh, to whack up 11, uh, to whack it up. So... Uh, Major operations, uh, serious illness only, uh, some prevention, uh, excellent health provision. And as we whack that up, that's going to knack a private health care. So, uh, that's going to be very, very expensive. Like, yeah, that's, uh, that's an extra 100 billion odd dollars. But it's going to have such a positive impact on the health of the country. Okay, how are we going to fund that? Because we could do with... Uh, yeah, nice hundred billion dollars. Okay, as a sticking plaster, what could we potentially do to sort out the upcoming drug problem? Okay, there's a couple of approaches here. We could do some form of enforcement, a drug enforcement agency. Surprisingly cheap, to be honest. Would also, yes, negatively impact violent crime. Trying to stop drugs making it into the country at all. A needle exchange program, that would be good for health, which is kind of what I want, but... That's expensive to do politically because, yes, yeah, some people see that as uh, enabling. Or, instead of law and order, we treat it as a public service thing. A drug treatment scheme. That is... Uh, okay. Interestingly, that doesn't seem to have... 
Are you sure that doesn't have a cost? Because if that doesn't have a cost, it's just got a political cost, then flipping great. I mean, technically, maybe, like, the cost is already rolled into the existing healthcare system. So, uh, that one doesn't seem too expensive, and it does actually affect health. Yeah, go on, we're gonna make that happen. Okay, still got nine political capital, still have a deficit. So, uh, right, come over here, Mr. Military, because I would say, yes, we can just help ourselves to another 15 billion dollars. I love it. Okay, obesity is starting to go down, but it's going to take some time before it stops being, you know, a, a major crisis. As for parents, there's a lot of them. They don't like the amount of, like, asthma and coronavirus and stuff. So, okay. There's only so much we're going to be able to do to deal with that. Tobacco usage, if we could get that down, then again, we've already started trying to get that down. We could whack up tobacco tax. Ooh, that's... That's unpopular as it turns out. Got it. And it probably... Yeah, it's not really generating that much more money anyway. Aha! Here's nice. We can spend some of that lovely tank money on a tobacco awareness campaign. Good. Yes, implement that. Whack it up to absolute flipping maximum. We'll spend some tank money telling people cigarettes are bad. And that way, less children die of asthma and parents are thrilled. Job done. Okay, following turn. Aha! ban alcohol adverts. Now, uh, might not stop alcoholism overnight, but step in the right direction. Honestly, banning adverts entirely seems a little bit over the top to me. Maybe, like, you know, restrict them to certain times when, say, teenagers are less likely to see them, but... Hmm. Okay. People aren't gonna like it, but... We do have a bloody health crisis, and that's kind of... Uh, I'm very divided on this one. Like, banning adverts for a product entirely doesn't really sit well with me. But I'm gonna say yes just because health is like my number one priority right now. Okay, that's gonna drop alcohol consumption. Love it. And health is ticking in the right direction. This is... Uh, okay, this is good. This is all very, very good. And uh, the environmentalists have been protesting. Okay, are they like dangerous yet? Okay, there's a fair few of them. Yes, but... Like, not that many, and they haven't gone, like, you know, full-on militant yet, so hopefully it's okay. The commuters are starting to come round. Is Gridlock still... Oh, Gridlock is very much moving in the right direction. Yeah, my policies are starting to come through. We might soon get Gridlock down to a level where it's no longer red. It's just, you know, nice and blue, and everybody will be happy. I mean, I could also just, uh, yeah, lower how much we're investing into our roads. That's going to actually bring down car usage a bit further. Okay, that's fairly expensive capital-wise. Don't do that just yet, because uh, deliberately screwing over the road infrastructure to try and make people not use cars, that seems like a bad call. Okay, let's consider what else we've got around here we haven't really looked at yet. I'm just going to kind of go around, try and find some big stuff, like say, aha, crime. So uh, everybody doesn't like crime. Crime kind of annoys everybody. Excluding criminals, but like apparently we're not courting their vote. But crime's also having a bad effect on GDP, on tourism, on stability. So yeah, if we could sort that out, that'd be flipping great. And it's being badly affected by all this stuff over here. So, ah, crime and violent crime also feed into prison overcrowding, which the liberals don't like. So if there was less crime, there'd be less overcrowding. Okay, I see what we got here, and... Alcohol abuse is also feeding into that. But we are trying to lower alcohol consumption already. So hopefully that's already moving in the right direction. Now antisocial behaviour specifically, that's the crime that's really annoying the conservatives. So, okay. What could we do to get that down a bit? Because it's already trending a bit down, but that was community policing, was it? Okay. So... That's actually very cheap to raise, because no one really objects to the idea of uh, community policing. Everyone seems pretty chill with that, and uh, it's not even that expensive. And the reduction in antisocial behaviour and alcohol abuse is uh, huge. Okay, you know what? I think we just pay for as much community policing as we can get away with. Alright, just whack another few billion dollars into that. That's got to be a good use of my political capital. And when I say capital, there was no capital cost. So, money. Money. That's the other thing, yes. 
Oh, here's an easy one. Liberals don't like tear gassing of protests. So, okay, that is uh, cheap to lower. Yep, we're just going to be getting rid of that. That's actually going to save us a few hundred million dollars already. Marvellous. So, we can just... Actually, can I just... Can I just abolish that? I don't see an abolish option. I mean, we're saying none, but we're still spending $461 million a quarter on tear gas, which makes me wonder where it's going, but okay. You know what? I'll save myself one political capital by just moving it to here, because that only costs me, yeah, $20 million more, but I do get an extra capital for that. Especially as, yeah, it looks like Liberals is actually one of the biggest groups going. So, Middle Income and Liberals, they're kind of the biggest groups at the moment, numerically, by the looksy of it. Though, a lot of people are environmentalists, because you're not just in one. Lots of people are, like, you know, in multiple groups together. These aren't mutually exclusive. But yeah, we do have a couple of weird bits and pieces going on here. Like, say, for example, Patriots are not actually that many people, but they're really, really happy right now. So we could probably do, like, defunding something that makes them happy. Oh, never mind, we've already been doing that, so that's fine. Speaking of which, how much more can we- Oh, now we're getting somewhere. Yes, 11 political capital to cut another flipping $40 billion out of the military. Now- You've still got a hundred billion dollars, all right? You're still well trained, you're gonna be fine. Right, I think we finally cut the military down to an okay size, and that should put us into a surplus starting next quarter, which means now I've got some money to splash about. Oh, here we go, healthy eating campaigns. Yes, health goes up, more people consider vegetarianism, obesity goes down, not even that expensive. Basically, anything that helps out with health is good, but free parenting classes. Okay, that's a bit more expensive, which is unfortunate. Then again, compulsory school sports. That I can get behind, get children exercising. In fact, I don't know why we'd really need to pay for that. I guess maybe for, like, you know, the equipment or the fields or whatever. So, okay, that one's tempting. That is going to be... That's going to be unpopular with your youth. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Health goes up, obesity goes down. It's not that expensive either. Let's just go for, yeah, rather than it being a law, it be a campaign to encourage because it's cheaper anyway and uh, whack that right up to max let's get obesity ticking down let's get health ticking up this is what we want to see damn it and we can actually just afford an alcohol awareness campaign to go with our tobacco awareness campaign so yeah let's get that ticking down because less alcohol being consumed and again this isn't a law this is just awareness so less people are just choosing to drink or drink a bit less that's going to lead to less alcohol abuse that's going to have a positive impact in on crime and in particular antisocial behavior which will keep the conservative sweet so this is all marvelous right here this is it turns out I'm a genius at America. Okay, unemployment's looking good, GDP's looking bad, and oh good, coronavirus is actually in the game. So there is now a deadly virus outbreak. Excellent. So healthcare demand just skyrocketed, GDP down, trade down, tourism ludicrously down, lifespan down, business confidence down. Oh, flippin' love it. And one of my major donors just walked away because they're not thrilled about presumably the whole military defunding thing. And yes, unfortunately that means our deficit is still a deficit because, yeah, GDP just took a bit of a knackering. Okay, but, ooh, have we actually sorted out obesity a bit? And, uh, well, it's not flashing at me. That's positive. Ah, look over here, though. Pollution. So, okay. If we could get that down, that's going to have a positive impact on health right there. So yeah, anything we could do to reduce car travel, air travel, or trade. Now, we don't want to reduce trade. Though, to be honest, trade should be down now already because of the pandemic. So yeah, bright side, pollution might improve a bit. Okay, the deficit is still under control because we've hacked so much out of the military. So we could afford to whack up, say, free school meals. That's got to be good for... Yep, health, the poor, poverty goes down. That's all positive and... Uh, okay, it's only an extra $2 billion. 
I think we should do it. Let's get some really nice, good school meals going on. That's never going to hurt. And, uh, aha, they're healthier meals. So obesity is going to go down. Yeah, make it happen. Okay, check the changes tab here. See what's going on. In particular, yeah, healthcare demand. Uh, that just became a problem. Okay, and that's going to feed through into uh, overcrowding the state health service cost. Uh, ah. Yes, that's getting more expensive over time because more people are relying on it because of coronavirus. And uh, health tax credits, whatever they are, I assume that's an American thing. Okay, let's take a moment to think about how we're getting re-elected here, which is, uh, yeah, the Liberals are slowly coming around. And there's a whole bunch of programs we can fund uh, for not much money to keep them chill. So that's not going to be a big problem. Now, uh, parents, we're doing a lot of good stuff in terms of uh, school buses, uh, and whatnot, and child benefit, but they're really worried about, yeah, healthcare, and in particular, yeah, overcrowding and respiratory disease. Now, that one's tricky to uh, sort out, in a way, because part of that is a function of uh, the environment. And the environment is a function of uh, pollution controls, GDP, uh, energy subsidies. Okay, that could be two birds with one stone. Oh, those are expensive. Got it. I mean, it's not that much. It's really not that much. We could whack that right up. That's going to be good for the environment. It's going to be, yeah, very negative on CO2 emissions. That's That's got to be a good way of bribing the environmentalists to vote for me. Yep, we're making it happen. There we go. That's all absolutely fine. Okay, what else do we need to do here? We need to do something about the healthcare situation. What could we maybe, like, you know, make happen down over here that could help out with that. Reforestation is weirdly controversial, but whatever. Okay, so we could start doing micro-generation grants over in taxes, uh, so more people generate their own energy. Or start slapping down taxes on junk food, uh, subsidies on healthy food. Uh, okay, this is... Uh, what's the best option here? Or frequent flyer taxes. Now that's going to help out the environment and get air travel down, and I know that has a knock-on effect to, you know, pollution. It is going to hurt GDP though, so... Ooh, that's... Does generate a lot of money though. Does generate a lot of flipping money. How much would the junk food tax bring in? Up to 5 billion if we really flipping knacker it. Okay. That's going to be... Hmm... I feel better with the healthy food subsidies than just by slapping taxes on everything, to be honest. Ah, but we could also afford a recreational drugs tax. So, at that point, yeah, okay. Some people don't really like it, but it's lots of flipping money. Loads of flipping money, in fact, that we could use to, you know, pay for treatment programs and whatnot. So, okay, that's being whacked right the flip up, yes. Okay, maybe not up to maximum, but... Okay, we'll put it in at... I'll put it in at three. Not six, just three. And I'm using that to pay for my health food subsidies, alright? So everybody now gets free bananas. So yeah, I'm not really biting the bullet in terms of putting a hundred billion dollars into state subsidies, but I'm doing a lot of little things. Like, you know, bicycles, fruit, adverts saying, hey, maybe smoking's bad for you, so... We're kind of taking a bit of an indirect approach to healthcare, but, you know, hopefully it'll all stack up in the end. And because health is ticking up, the doctors have called off their strike, which is good. Presumably demand is going down, or possibly because we've got that whole situation with the pandemic, they've decided, hey, maybe we should be, like, uh, helping with this. And crime is... Is crime going down good or bad? Because crime going down sounds good, but the arrow is red. Oh, and popularity is starting to jump up here. People are liking this. I mean, health is up 42%. You can't flipping argue with that. Gridlock has indeed dropped below the stop trigger. So as a result, that is no longer a major crisis anymore. And uh, we've even managed to... Uh, okay, it's not flashing anymore. I'm going to take all of this as a win. Okay? Obesity. Moving in the right direction. Asthma, etc. Moving in the right direction. Antisocial behaviour moving in the right direction. Debt lower than it ever was. Military still perfectly capable of nuking every single person on earth. Don't you flipping worry. So basically, complete victory for me. 
And pollution is going in the right direction too as the level of cars falls. So this is... Uh, okay, everything I want to happen is happening. Nothing is flashing red at me anymore. This is all marvellously good news. So, I think I know what we need to do at this point, which is, oh, the commuters in particular. Oh, they are so flipping happy with me. This is, this is excellent. Environmentalists, they're pretty chill too. I think at this point, yeah, we need to get the liberals on side, and I think we can do that pretty cheaply with a bunch of, like, little programs down here, like, say, art subsidies and whatnot. Yes, that would do the job. Okay, my friends, what are the biggest things you hate? So, uh, you hate water cannons, uh, you hate rubber bullets, you don't like prison overcrowding, and uh, armed police not 100% sure about. Okay, now some of that we must be able to do something with. And submachine guns, that does seem excessive. And apparently the most ludicrous extreme thing I could do would be saying, hey, maybe like, you know, police with guns should be trained specialists. Which, you know, is just kind of how it is in the UK, but apparently that's a ludicrous radical extreme position, so uh, we can't actually afford that. I could spend 11 capital and also, yeah, save myself like a billion dollars in gun costs by just, you know, lowering it from uh, every officer armed. What's above every officer? Oh, they're armed and also they get fancy guns. Got it. Right, so we might need to consider that. Now, they also said uh, water cannons. Yes, now that's got to be something we can get rid of nice and easy. Yes, get that down to nothing, though. How do we just abolish this? Because again, we're paying $1.8 billion for no cannons. Ah, John, that'd be the cancel button. Yeah, that does strike me as a good idea. We're going to be cancelling this policy entirely. So off you flipping go. Okay, we've also got rid of tear gas entirely because we don't need any of that. So no cannons, uh, no tear gas. Liberals are going to love it. They're all going to vote for me. It's going to be wonderful. Here we go, family planning. Whack that up a bit because, yes, education, medical advice, contraception, distribution. That's going to be some good stuff for health. In fact, that's actually, that's a massive increase in health right there. Though it will take like uh, two years to start feeding through. But go on, we're going to make that happen right there. Then we're going to get ourselves some, where are the arts? We're going to get some art subsidies going on right over there. Oh, that's going to be cheap. So right now we've got circuses. Uh, Low budget movies, uh, theatres, no, 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 we could do better than that, damn it, this seems very cheap. Art galleries, uh, opera houses, so, uh, okay, foreign relation, oh, this is good for tourism. Well, it's going to pay for itself then, isn't it? So that's all absolutely fine, plus it's good for, it's good for education. The parents are going to like it, yeah, whack that right up to absolute maximum toe. Okay, I know we said we weren't going to lower this any further, but to be honest, we do kind of, uh, kind of need to. And we're going to use that to pay for a beautiful Keep the Country Tidy campaign. So put your flipping rubbish in the bin, you bastards. That's going to be good for the environment. The environmentalists are going to love it. And there's a lot of them, and they're liking me more and more as pollution goes down. Ooh, we've got people smuggling, so... Okay, people entering the country inside cargo containers, organised attempt at people smuggling. So, uh, the criminals have been arrested, uh, what do we do with the people? Ooh, that's tricky. Um, okay, so... Uh, inhumane to deport them now they're here, or, wrong signal, there might be, yeah, a pull factor going forwards. Okay, we're trying to bribe the Liberals to like us right now, so we're going to let them stay because, uh, yep, Liberals like it, Patriots don't care so much about there's not enough of you. And honestly, I doubt you're liking what I'm doing anyway. So, okay, that's all good stuff. Also, like how the game says, oh, the polls aren't looking good. They're looking fine, like, you know, versus how we were a few months ago. Things are great. Oh, and what's that? I've created a surplus. You're welcome. Oh, this is useful. I can actually arrange this by uh, population. So, uh, okay, there's... Oh, there's a lot of capitalists. Oh, I might not be actually keeping them that happy. And, oh, there's there's more religious people than I thought there was, actually. Okay, um... Right, what are we going to do with all of them? Because I suspect a significant overlap between the liberals and the environmentalists. So, uh, yeah, getting both high might actually be kind of duplicating some labour there. I mean, what I could do is uh, convert the military cuts into a tax cut. We could straight up lower income tax. I mean, just a little cut there, 
and the middle income people, they flipping love it. Plus that's going to have a very small effect on GDP as well. So the general health of the economy is going to be in good shape. So I'm giving away like, yeah, nearly a hundred billion dollars. Okay, if I want to give away a hundred billion dollars. Right, let's go over to income right now. I mean, okay, what other taxes could we theoretically lower? Which taxes do you guys care about? Basically, nothing more than income. And the capitalists would like it if GDP was high, so that's the biggest driver for them. So lowering taxes would cause that to happen. Like, people aren't happy about my ongoing attempt to basically completely defund the military, but if I was to, you know, partner it with, hey, here's a tax cut, I feel like people would go for it. Here we go, get the military down to just some reservists, so that's another 40 billion we've just saved, and convert that straight into a beautiful tax cut, okay? Not the biggest tax cut, oh I could go right down to, no maybe that would be a bit much, okay, just a bit, alright, just not like 50 billion odd of income tax, so everybody gets an income tax cut, you're welcome. Also, let's get tourism up, okay? America, we've fixed it now, so it's safe to come here. Okay, we'll see what that does as time goes by, because I feel like, actually, everything's going really well. Alcohol abuse has subsided, that's got to be good. There's been a school shooting, I will try and deal with that when I can. I mean, quite frankly, I'm amazed. We're actually, like, a year and a half into my reign, and this is the first school shooting, which is, I mean, that's a big step forward. And health is looking so damn good. Okay, here's something unfortunate. Environmentalists are actually going down because uh, respiratory has also got worse, which is because uh, the environment has... Uh, the environment's taken a bit of a tick downwards, possibly because GDP went up because of the tax cut. So, okay, that might have been a bit of a problem. Parents down, patriots down, middle income is uh, up, but... Surprisingly not much. I feel like I just gave away a lot of money for not much benefit, actually. I mean, I say that, the surplus is looking really, really good right now, actually. So that there, that is nice. In fact, okay, it's time to start throwing money at some problems. Looks like the biggest thing we could do for liberals right now would be prisoner overcrowding. So, okay, prisoner overcrowding is mainly a function of crime, but if I get crime down, the Liberals are gonna be annoyed I'm doing that. Well, that's just not helpful, guys. Okay, the police in general can help sort out a whole bunch of things, insofar as violent crime, corruption, antisocial behaviour, lots of stuff people don't like. And right now we've got... Right now we've got no police. Are we sure we've got no police? I'm not convinced we've got no police, but apparently we've got no police. So, okay, we could definitely do with spending a fair whack more money on a bit of police. And uh, the Liberals don't seem to care about this, so... I mean, the Conservatives are going to be thrilled. Uh, state employees, uh, they're going to be thrilled. Uh, there's going to be more of them. Uh, violent crime's going to drop. Crime's going to drop. This is... Okay, sure, this seems like a bargain. We'll sort this out, no problem. Not to match, though, because, you know, the police aren't the best answer to every problem. We've already put a lot of money into, say, uh, you know, community policing and whatnot. There might be some more good stuff we can do there. Okay, we have been annoying the capitalists a bit, so uh, how about setting up a nice, cheap National Business Council? It's not going to cost much, we're not going to actually listen to them, it's just going to, you know, help them feel like they're being heard. And the retired, they haven't been thrilled with us, so how about we spend some money on public libraries? They're a universal good, good for education, good for everybody. Whack that right up to maximum. Okay, so, good news and bad news. One, prison overcrowding is no longer an issue, the Liberals are going to be thrilled. Downside, yeah, the private space industry has started uh, fading away, presumably because it was partly dependent on the military. So that's a shame. And, ooh, climate change. Right, we do need to get those environmentalists on side. So uh, what do we need to do here? So either maybe be a bit richer, but environment screwed or ratify. Yep, ratify. We're ratifying that. The capitalists are, oh, the capitalists are really furious. But CO2 emissions are so much down. That's got to be for the good. And we've still got a massive surplus. 
popularity is ticking back up again. Hang on, just get everyone back over to. Yep, okay, environmentalists definitely going up. Conservatives not even that annoyed at me. This is, uh, this is all looking positive. Okay, if we need to do something to, you know, keep the religious from being too annoyed at us, uh, giving some subsidies to faith schools is not going to be the most controversial thing in the world. It's, it's pretty cheap. It's just going to keep them sweet. Then again, it's going to, it's going to increase the membership size of the religious faction, which I don't want because I'm not really sure they like me that much. Oh, now this will do. It's a bit expensive, but adult education subsidies so people can retrain. Productivity goes up. Education goes up. Yep, we'll have that and we'll have it absolutely full up, please. Oh, this just seems like a no-flipping brainer. Compulsory foreign language classes. So everyone in state schools has to learn a foreign language. That seems to basically make everybody happy, apart from patriots who we've established we don't care about. So even the capitalists like that one, yep, whack it the flip up. And antisocial behavior has been eliminated. Good, you're welcome. My popularity has now skyrocketed to 67% of everybody in the country. We're only halfway to the next election. I've built a massive surplus. Right, so everybody gets free stuff forever. Got it. And small business grants. Yes, that's good. Small local businesses. That's, oh, it's a bit expensive, mind. Uh, it's definitely a bit expensive. Then again, they really love it. They absolutely adore it, the self-employed do. So, I mean, go on, sure. We've got the money. Let's do it. Can't help but notice everyone's healthy, crime's been eliminated, education's taken up, poverty's gone, GDP looking great, you're all welcome. And because I'm so damn popular these days, yes, I get more political capital because everybody loves me. Ah, this'll do. Smart meters. So energy efficiency goes up. The industry's not thrilled, but more environmentalists and they like it and they like me too. So yes, you can have that. That's no problem at all. Whack that up to maximum. And I tell you what, it doesn't cost much. So we're going to give a bit of a subsidy to clean fuel, which the environmentalists are going to love, as are the motorists. Because we were trying to help them and I feel like we didn't really uh, get that done particularly well last time. So yep, just pile more into that. Oh, we've got... We could just do whatever the hell we want. Right, well, we could do with a bit more money, so how about we just... Oh, we can actually get the military down too. Okay, $8 billion is, to be honest, still plenty. That is loads. So, okay, we've now taken the military down to as low as it goes, but we can just reinvest that into all sorts of other fun stuff. And apparently we've got an incoming water shortage of all things. So, okay, wasn't expecting that. Okay, what we need to sort that out is... Uh, ah, this is something to do with, like, uh, too many cows and ranches and whatever. So, okay, if we got more people who were vegetarian or we just improved the environment. Okay, we need to improve the environment a bit more. Oh, and my productivity is now super high because I've made everyone healthy and happy. Because, yes, go me. And that's cheering up the capitalists and the self-employed. So my popularity is now nearly 100%. Okay, 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 okay. What do we need to do here? We've got a giant pile of free money to just hand out. Or we could start, you know what? With a 50 billion surplus, congratulations guys, uh, we're giving you a very small tax cut. I'm going to give away uh, half of that immediately. And the rest I'm going to put into right to die. That's just a personal one. I really believe in uh, in the right to die. So, yep, we're going to be whacking that one up. Beautiful. Maybe not like, ooh. I mean, to be honest, kind of at will, yes. So, uh, single doctor agreement, like... I'd rather have the doctor agreement than the family agreement. Like, what does the family get to say? That should be like, you know, that's just a question of conscience. So, I mean, uh, whack it up to full, it's fine. And a trade council. Yes, international trade, foreign relations. Whack that up to max too. Ah, uh, yes. And somebody did say we needed to get, uh, yeah, vegetarianism up a bit because we've got a bit of a water crisis going on and that's the easiest way to do it. So, uh, yeah, let's have compulsory food labelling because... Uh, it makes sense people should know what's in the food they're eating. And it's super cheap as well. Plus, it'll help out with obesity. Yep, 100% fine. Can I but notice that some of my actual ministers are getting a bit, uh, 
tired and useless, though. Not very loyal anymore, not really producing the points. So, okay, as we're going into an election, time for a reshuffle. There we go, now that's more like it. The only problem we've got is I've just been too damn successful, we're just so rich that now everybody's buying new cars and sometimes driving two of them at once just to show off, so gridlock's getting out of hand again, dear oh dear. Okay, time to put together a man of festo here, and... Okay, secularity of education. Yep, I'm willing to make a promise to do that. We're gonna make that super secular. Lovely. Human development, that's... Okay, it's at 70% right now. Raising by 25% is gonna be tricky. Yep, you know what? I'm going in with nothing but that. I'm just going in saying, hey, we're gonna secularize education. You know what? As the flipping private space industry just naffed off, well, we're gonna have our own space industry with Blackjack on Mars. Yeah, there we go. It's a little bit, little bit expensive, to be honest. So it's gonna be like, you know, a cheap Mars program. But like, you know, maybe we'll just like, yeah, we'll have a satellite then again. Is it really worth having a satellite? Oh, that's, that's not even a person. Man's mission is, uh, it's gonna cost a bit. But then what's, what's the, what's the top? What is the top? Do we send more than one person? Are we just sending one right now? I mean, people seem to like it. Even the Patriots like it. And apparently we'd be hiring lots of people to go to Mars because all of our rocket scientists are just sitting around being unemployed right now or something. I mean, it's good for technology. And that's gotta be good in general. Like, 10% boost technology over the next four years. I mean... Screw it, we're going to Mars! And now it is time. Who is going to win the election? Is it going to be the John party for more John? Or is it going to be the People's Front of Judea? And also some people just like, don't vote. So begin the count. And oh my goodness, it looks like it would appear that apathy has won the election. I got 94% of the vote. Though I will admit, yes, apathy does seem to have uh, just... Uh, one, which is a little upsetting, but what can you do? Still, the John Party for More John has won a completely historic re-election with 94 cocky percent of the votes. And I believe literally my only promise was I was going to, you know, make science a thing in our education system. So there you flipping go, there's some science for you. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I have fixed America. Everybody is healthy, there is no crime, there is no unemployment, there is no pollution, everybody loves me, and I have been returned to power with 94% of the vote, so uh, you're welcome. Basically, next four years after this next election, just do this. Do those things I just did, and that's it. That's how you fix America. This is Democracy 4. It's very similar to Democracy 3, but like, you know, a bit bigger and more complex. I love Democracy 3, so I'm glad to have it back, damn it. Link in the description below. It's a good time. It's a damn good time. It's, you know, not the world's most complex game, I say, about a game where, you know, everything influences 80 other things, so it kind of actually is, but... I just find it a good relaxing time, damn it. Maybe we'll see some more of this, because we did do a few videos on Democracy 3, so... Uh, We'll see. We'll see over time whether this comes around again. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Democracy 4. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Wait, did people just vote out democracy? Hang on, what have you just done? Oh, go on, let's have the greatest Oktoberfest ever. Yay! Spain and Russia have announced a new alliance as a result of the warmongering of certain Central European countries. Oh, well, excuse me! My leader from now on, no weaklings will stand in the way of this country's path to glory. Oh god, Germany, not again!